Uh, good morning, everybody, um, and uh, welcome, Mr. Vic Atre, to this webinar organized by the Department of Political Science, Kirurimal College, University of Delhi. It's indeed a great uh, pleasure and privilege to have you with us uh, this Saturday morning uh, to talk to us on this uh, very, very important topic of the evolving role of civil services in India. Uh, 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 when we talk about uh, the the role and the responsibilities of the civil services in modern times, particularly uh, in the context of India, there's a lot of debate and discussions which are happening around this theme. And how can civil services actually be responsive, transparent, accountable uh, to, the, to the citizens is something which uh, a lot of uh, people are, are debating, uh, discussing, and, uh, and trying to instill the sense of responsibility among the civil services. And you are well aware of this. Uh, uh, the, the topic is also of uh, special interest to our students because as you know, uh, the students of political science and public administration often prefer to join the civil services and UPSC as it is known uh, in India. And uh, many of them uh, sit for this competitive exams. They, uh, and within the structure of the Department of Political Science, uh, where we teach, uh, uh, teach uh, two important papers on, on public administration in India, another one being the policy sciences or public policy making in India, uh, within the classroom setting also, uh, uh, students uh, do ask about uh, what this profession uh, entails. So uh, it is very, very interesting uh, as uh, we often uh, sort of uh, debate and delve deeply into the critical underpinnings of the ethos uh, or the emergence of the civil services as a profession itself. And uh, very famously, uh, while we do that, we refer back to uh, the, the German uh, philosopher that is Max Weber, uh, and who gave this uh, seminal, uh, you know, and pivotal theory of uh, the ideal, uh, ideal bureaucracy, uh, where he sort of lays down the central characteristics of what he says is a most rational legal system of obedience, which the citizen need to adopt. And, uh, and uh, he considers civil services to be the most uh, you know, uh, important and significant arm of the government. It's an action part of the government. And he, in his uh, very, very famous book, uh, which I'm sure Mr. Atre, you would be aware of, uh, titled as the Protestant Ethics and the Spirit of Capitalism, he links the rise of capitalist mode of production itself to the uh, rise of Protestant ethics and to the, to, the, uh, to the formal structures of uh, bureaucracy and how bureaucracy actually helps uh, the capitalist mode of production to emerge and flourish. And uh, we know that's, that's history. And we know that bureaucracy plays a very, very important role in executing the will of the state. So bureaucracy is that implementing, executing arm of the, uh, of the government. Bureaucracy, of course, uh, what uh, Max Weber is sort of uh, uh, visualizing has to be very impartial, neutral, uh, 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 you know, office bearers out to execute any kind of political dispensation which comes to the power. Uh, but he's also very, very cognizant about the inbuilt uh, fallouts uh, of this memoth, rigid organization of bureaucracy itself because he often raises these flags about uh, how bureaucracy can be uh, can be tardy it can be uh, very very rigid uh, it it is accused of uh, you know red tapism often and this whole concept of uh, bureaucratic steel frame um, uh, emerged from uh, you know max weber's analysis of bureaucracy so he is very very well balanced to 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 tell the audience about the, 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 the advantages and the disadvantages of bureaucratic structures. He also, of course, raises a very, very important point of the susceptibility of the, 
uh, of the bureaucracy to, to self, self advertise himself, to increase its power, weight, importance, significance. Uh, and then he also mentioned this kind of a nexus which emerges between the, uh, the political uh, leaders or the political power holders and the bureaucracy. Uh, so it's, it's, it is, of course, a very, very interesting uh, study uh, and which is an important part, I personally believe, to understand the bureaucratic structures or civil services anywhere in the world. And I also remember this very, very uh, famous Karl Marx, uh, uh, you know, um, you know, definite, not definition, I can't say that, but about analysis uh, of, um, of bureaucracy, where he says the general spirit of bureaucracy is secrecy, is a mystery which is preserved inwardly by this uh, hierarchical structure, scale of principles. And externally, it is, uh, uh, works like a very, very closed uh, corporation with little uh, you know, transparency uh, and outsiders, especially the common citizens, uh, uh, find uh, the bureaucracy very, very unreachable uh, uh, sort of not even adhering to the important needs for which they reach out to the bureaucratic of officers of the civil services, civil servants. Uh, another significant uh, historical, uh, theoretical development in the school of, uh, uh, you know, public service or civil services, which I need to mention quickly here, is that of the work which was done by Fred Griggs in the 1960s, especially with the rise of uh, these emerging developing countries uh, right after colonialism. So he is doing this kind of uh, dissection and trying to understand that does the bureaucratic order which Weber proposes, uh, does, it, does it really fit into the scheme of things or the scenario which, um, uh, which is there in the developing countries. And he is sort of imploring for this ecological perspective to understand uh, bureaucracy. And his very, very famous book, The Prismatic Society that he writes in 1960s, he says bureaucracy can actually never be insulated uh, from the social cultural milieu. And thereby it often takes on the features of the society where it is embedded. So a bureaucratic structure in India would, uh, or a typical bureaucrat in India would behave differently than, in a, uh, than a, a, a bureaucrat in America, because he would pick on the characteristics of the social or cultural milieu itself and uh, would talk in that language. He also mentions this concept of, uh, you know, canteen bazaar model of bureaucracy where how uh, the, the system of administration itself is compromised and behaves differently for different clients. Uh, of course, he goes on to, you know, descri describe in-depth uh, features of so-called prismatic society, how it is overlapping, how it is polycommunal. It often gets dysfunctional. Uh, he is very, very, you know, uh, 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 very, very, uh, I can say the word, uh, you know, irritated in a way to, to, to read through uh, some of these features or, or characteristics of bureaucracy as uh, it begins to emerge, especially in the post-colonial uh, countries and emerging economies. And that is the context in which he's trying to understand bureaucracy. Bringing back to you know the Indian concept, uh, we are well aware. We all know that Indian bureaucracy is not a perfect structure. We are aware of the malaise which the Indian civil services often suffer for. And in fact, uh, some of the administrative reform commissions, the Niti Aayog, uh, ha uh, have uh, done this kind of in-depth study to to uh, to remove or revamp. Uh, and reinvent, uh, uh, reinvent the civil services so that they can actually be neutral uh, dispenser of the policies of the government so that uh, some of these charges of corruption, delay, red tapism can be removed. And uh, one of the important reports, uh, uh, recent reports rather, there have been many, many, but one of the recent report, uh, landmark report was in uh, 2018. Uh, which was published by uh, Niti Ayok, 
And the title of the re uh, report was the strategy for new India at 75, which underscores the need to put in place this kind of a reformed uh, bureaucratic uh, structure uh, and it particularly focuses on reform in the recruitment, in the training, and also bringing in this kind of a 360 evaluation, performance evaluation for civil services to ensure that there is efficient, effective, economical delivery of public services to achieve the uh, larger inclusive goal of the society as is massaged by the new India. Uh, the government also announced the Mission Karam Yogi uh, program where civil services would be trained to be more creative, constructive, imaginative, professional, proactive, um, energetic, um, also enabling uh, along with being transparent and uh, being technologically savvy because civil services or many of the uh, civil services programs and plans and policies are now being shifted to, to the domain of e-governance. So the tech savvy uh, use of, uh, of technology to whether it's a cash transfer or, or, or you know, uh, reporting about uh, uh, the functioning of particular department, whether it's RTI, that is right to information, all these are enabling techniques which are being adopted by the government so that uh, the engagement or the interface between the bureaucracy and the common citizen is more smooth, more uh, responsive, more empathetic, and more transparent. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, another report uh, which is of uh, importance is the Second Administrative Reform Commission's report, which was published in 2009, and which nearly, you know, submitted uh, uh, 1,514 recommendations uh, highlighting the several constraints to the development of this highly efficient, transparent, and accountable civil services. So, uh, uh, so this morning, as we uh, we gather uh, for this uh, webinar, it would be very, very interesting that uh, we hear from you, Mr. Vivek Atre, because. Uh, you have been in the part of the system for almost uh, 25 years and you've seen the structures, the functioning, uh, the advantages and the disadvantages of bureaucracy so closely. So it will be, uh, you know, uh, very, very enlightening uh, to the students of political science and public administration to actually hear from you from uh, not just refer to the, to the books and articles uh, for their understanding of government reports, but somebody was served on that seat for, for nearly three decades. Uh, that kind of a nuanced understanding of the system and structures can only come uh, from, uh, from uh, somebody uh, who, has, uh, who has actually engaged uh, from on both the sides with the citizens and also with the power corridors where you have to constantly navigate your way through the uh, to the political pressures and other kind of uh, you know uh, maneuver maneuvering not in a negative sense but you have to sort of uh, walk this kind of a tight uh, rope uh, uh, on a tight rope because you are balancing uh, the, the aspirations of the common people, you're balancing the political will uh, within your own, uh, you know, specific roles and responsibilities. Uh, so I also, uh, you know, uh, take uh, this occasion because students would like to know more about your background as a key, as a key speaker for today morning. So uh, Mr. Viveka Three, uh, just for my students' information, he is not only an ex-Indian Administrative Service officer, but is also uh, a, you know, a prolific writer. He's a motivational speaker. Uh, he's, he's authored many books to name some, is uh, Move On Bunny, uh, Dubeji Bounces Back. And uh, uh, he took voluntary retirement to actually pursue his passion for speaking and writing as a full-time uh, profession. So that's also very unique. We don't hear that kind of cases uh, very often. And uh, he, he, he talks about, uh, you know, well-being, about leadership qualities. He talks about mental well-being. Uh, he, he's, he's talking 
these days on winning through emotional intelligence and how the Indians need to be a global citizen. Uh, how do we balance these different roles and responsibilities that we have in our lives? And another element of his uh, uh, usual talk is about how to be this all-rounder. What are the ingredients to be this all-rounded, well-developed personality and uh, living simple, but also very, very uh, superb and satisfying and flourishing life where you are always on the growth uh, trajectory. So uh, uh, thank you, uh, 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 Mr. Viveka III. Uh, and on behalf of the uh, La Politique, the Department of Political Science, Kronimal College, University of Delhi, uh, we, uh, we extend a warm welcome to you. And also, uh, we are looking forward to hearing from you. Thanks a lot.